Welcome back to Fast Market, everybody. I'm Kevin Hinks, joined on set now by the world traveler, Miss Jenny Horn, and joined in studio by Vice President of Research at Likefolio.com, Miss Megan Brantley. You know, you know what bothers me? I've got Miss Tan Jenny Horn here, and I've got Miss Hurricane and Beignet Megan Brantley here. And what a great time to talk about airlines because both of you just got off planes, frankly. So we'll have some great discussions here about airlines. And the third airline that we're talking about today in our theme is Southwest Airlines. Megan, what do you have on Southwest Airlines? So whenever we look at Southwest, we're listening for people talking about, um, you know, booking their flights on Southwest, um, you know, choosing to fly that, whether they're talking about loyalty points or anything like that. And what we see is actually a little bit of a decline this year, um, especially this quarter that just ended in December. Nothing, nothing too outstanding. Um, whenever we look at this trend, it's honestly very similar to what we see in Delta as well. So if this was something just isolated to Southwest, we might be a little bit more concerned about it. But in general, a little bit lower year over year from a purchase intent perspective. I think you can see there on the chart, that little bit of a, a bearish divergence starting to form. So this is definitely something that we'll watch into earnings. Megan, have you guys noticed any change, like a Boeing factor with Southwest? Because as we know, Southwest, you know, though they claim it's less than 5% of their revenue, they've still got a, a Boeing problem, don't they? 34 planes sit grounded right now as we speak. Have you seen that in any of the data, any drop off from that? You know, I think that that could definitely be an indicator for their purchase intent, maybe a potential cause of a little bit of a dip. From a happiness perspective, Southwest isn't being tested. You know, they're still in an upper echelon, I would say, along with Delta versus an American versus a United. So it's it's positive for Southwest that consumers are still happy. You know, their, their levels are near 60% positive, um, vice versa. You know, you've got American uh, down in the upper 40s. So I think that in that sense that's that's good for southwest that they're able to keep their consumers happy but maybe you know less people are able to fly and i think that that's being reflected on the purchase intent levels that you're seeing now megan consistently isn't delta the highest of the consumer happiness i believe we talk about that one a lot yes <laughs> yes you're exactly right they are a little bit higher than delta or i'm sorry they are a little bit higher than southwest but they're very um competitive southwest and delta just in general from a happiness level um more than 10 percent higher than what we look at when we look at united or american see the problem with people we do this show out of chicago as everyone knows this is not a major delta hub no it is so not. we don't get the exposure to delta that other cities do especially down south like atlanta and yeah. and the south we're american united airlines and midway airport our little office offshoot airport is all Southwest basically. So we really get those names more than we get Delta. So we don't get the exposure to Delta that some other Southern uh, parts of the country do. <laughs> I even feel like our exposure to Southwest is a little less. Maybe because I fly out of O'Hare, so I might Yeah, because it's all biased. midway. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's all, Southwest, it's almost like has their own airport here in Chicago, w w w which is midway. And they do so much out of there that if you fly out of O'Hare, you're right, you don't see a lot of Southwest You're totally there. like in a tunnel there. But right. okay, you and Oliver actually this morning on MTL talked to Tony Carlisle yes. about Southwest. And you talked a lot about how they have an attractive balance sheet. Mm -hmm. And they actually have an unmatched record of profitability. I think it was something of 46 years. A long road, yes. But so does this mean that we saw Megan is saying that basically they've had, of course, a rougher end to 2019. Does this mean this could be a good thing for their 2020 going forward? You know, I think that I think that you know they have earnings January 23rd. You're right. The guest that came on uh, Morning Trade Live with South. Oliver and I, they 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 like Southwest, mm -hmm. and he gave a, a great presentation on why Southwest is such a positive name. But Megan, you guys have this is one of those rare cases where. Uh, like Folio has a divergence in some of their data, isn't it, with the stock and the overall uh, data that, that you're seeing? Yeah, this is this is one of those times when purchase intent is being tested. It's it's down a little bit year over year, and in the meantime, you know the stock 
is up since the same time where we were last year. So I think that this is definitely something that will watch into earnings. I think that it is positive, you know, that the perch that the happiness levels are are consistent, right? That they're maintaining these happiness levels. That's good for Southwest. So it's nothing nothing crazy alarming yet, but it's definitely something that we're watching into earnings. I mean, Southwest from a PR perspective is really head and shoulders above everyone else. Even think about this. Even the settlement mm -hmm. that they came to with Boeing over the whole 737 MAX, they gave it all to the employees and put that out there in the news services that they gave all the money back to the employees. So their PR is second to none. And from a stock standpoint, if you look at like a comparison of the other airlines, yeah. they're really not doing too bad considering they've right. got the largest exposure to the 737 MAX. Right, exactly. Yeah. So Megan, there's so much to go through here, but all in all, let's wrap this up and say, <laughs> do we like Southwest or who's our favorite? And where does Southwest sit on that highest to lowest range? Um, from a purchase intent and happiness perspective, Southwest is coming in around number two. I think Delta Delta is the top from a happiness perspective. And um, then you've got, you look at Southwest, then you go down to United, then finally at the bottom of our happiness level is American. So if we had to rank them, you know, that's how it would look from, from a consumer's love standpoint. Um, but definitely, definitely watching a little bit of purchase intent being tested into this earnings report. Okay. All right, Jenny, tweets. So, tweets, so she mentions, <laughs> of course, all the airlines, and this is something that people love to talk about on Twitter. They love to yeah. talk about their cancellations. It seems like <laughs> airlines are one of those things people love to complain, which we always talk about on this show. So our first tweet says, from an investor side, I can see that United, Southwest, and American are constantly having delayed flights recently. The 737 MAX has been a big thorn with it grounded. Being short Boeing is a dangerous game. They'll get this right and get approval before March. Leap call position is the play. So Megan, Kevin asked you, of course, if 737 specifically is having any impact on consumer happiness, but have the holidays specifically had any impact on happiness? Because people's flights are, of course, delayed. People are traveling more in the holiday yeah, season. Yeah, and, and it's called winter. <laughs> and we were both you know, traveling. Oh, 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 oh yes. my flight got delayed. Yeah, it's called winter. I, know, I love the, the blame on the airlines yeah. for the winter storm. <laughs> yeah. you know? How dare you let it snow right. on my plane? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, we're not seeing any any special or a, a dip in happiness, like I mentioned for Southwest. So I think that that's good. They were able to maintain through the holidays. But when you look at them versus like a Delta, who's not impacted by any of those 737 groundings, you know, it's no surprise that Delta is the top. I think it's impressive that Southwest even though they're the most impacted by these groundings, they're still the second highest sentiment whenever we look at these airlines. So I think that that's, that's positive. That speaks to their, you know, their strength as a company, but it's definitely, you know, you still do have to note, we are seeing a little bit of a drop in purchase intent. So that's just something we've got to keep an eye on. You know, maybe I'm personally biased, but the whole not picking a seat before, like having to find a seat when you're boarding <laughs> the plane, like totally stresses me out. It's like going to a general Agreed. admission concert, right? Everyone goes flying onto the plane Yes, yes, yes. It's like a total nightmare. Yeah. So that and then and then when you're sitting in one of the two good seats and and those last people are walking around, like, do not, don't come here. Get, do, <laughs> yeah. keep moving. Yeah, you just like avoid yeah, eye contact. Do not, do avoid not sit here. Contact. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So our next tweet is from Alex, who says Southwest has a recent MACD indicator reversal with a relatively low RSI that suggests a possible breakout to the $59 price range. Let's see if Southwest Air is ready to take flight again. So actually, the stock was up higher earlier. I looked yep. at it, it was about uh, up almost half a percent. Now it's relatively unchanged. But it opened down pretty sharply this morning. It, it was did. it opened lower because of the Boeing news and their sympathy with Boeing. But yeah, it's rallied all the way back to be really unchanged on the day now. So with it trading at 54 right now, Kevin, do you think 59 is a reasonable price target? Uh, yeah, 10%. Who in the world wouldn't take a 10%? But, you know, <laughs> airlines are such their own little world right. in how they trade mm -hmm. because so many things affect them. Like just the word that Sean Cruz and I were talking about today, capacity. Mm -hmm. You would think adding seats would add revenue and therefore the stock would go up, mm -hmm. but no. Traders that trade airlines see that as the exact opposite and very bearish when they add capacity because they think that's a price war, mm -hmm. which leads to lower prices and lower revenues. It's And then you've got to worry about gas prices, right? Crude oil right. spiking is probably weighing on these names. There's just a, so much to trade and, and digest and consume when you're looking at airlines. It's just a constant but they but they but they move. Mm -hmm. The great thing about airline stocks is that they move both up and down. And kind of consistently, usually all together. Mm -hmm. 
what I did, Megan, any last thoughts coming from Southwest Airlines? Give us a final thought for the one that's consistently number two. <laughs> yeah, um, I would say, you know, extreme consumer loyalty, very yeah. happy customers. Um, no doubt about the strength of this company, but definitely a little bit of a testing of that post, those purchase intent levels. Yeah, and I think the Boeing news or Boeing moving along on their timeline to get these planes back in the air is critical to Southwest yeah. in the second half of this year. All Agreed, right, for Ma sure. Megan Brantley coming to us live, Vice President of Research at likefolio.com. Thanks for coming on, Megan. Thanks, good to talk with you guys. All right, so Jenny, we, when, when we trade this name, mm -hmm. you have to think as the way I do, I look three to six months out. Mm -hmm. And you're hoping that three to six months out brings some type of resolution in Boeing, mm -hmm. right? Which if you look, uh, follow me to the chart guys, and I'll show you the relationship between Boeing stock, which is the pink line, and Southwest stock, which is the chart. And you can see the correlation between the two stocks. So it's really, with some deviations, of course, as Boeing goes, so does Southwest Airlines. So you want to, if you're long and you like Southwest, cheer for Boeing to, to get re resolution in the 737 MAX problems, and that will be the most bullish long-term indicator for something like Boeing. So maybe this is doomsday of me, but worst case scenario is we have no resolution in the 737 right. max, nothing happens with Boeing, it's a tragedy for Boeing. Right. What does that mean for Southwest? Well, here, I wanna well, be careful. Look at the that earnings scenario. from last quarter when everyone was concerned about Boeing's effect on Southwest, they came out with great numbers right. and they did very well. But that, that the Boeing situation and the 737 MAX is still a drain mm -hmm. on, on Boeing and still a headwind for Southwest. Right. So it's something you're gonna have to deal with. So if you're a big bull mm -hmm. in, in Southwest Airlines, you're looking for some type of second half or second quarter resolution from Boeing. Right, because then at this point you're convinced the narrative is that it's already as worse as it's gonna be, it's already priced in. Right, exactly. All right, Jenny Horn, mm -hmm. first day back from far, <laughs> so far away. Back. You're so tan, you make me look pale. <laughs> it's just not good. It's not a good look for me sitting next to you. It makes me look ill for no, some reason. No, no way, I'm All happy right. to be back. Thanks for coming on, Jen.